First thing I want to do is I want to say thank you to everyone who has been supportive in this challenging time. Second thing I want to say is that I apologize to all of the women that has been affected by this situation. This situation is a really tough situation, a really, a really uh, serious situation and allegations that has been uh, bestowed upon me is really sad. Now, I know that there's women out there that has truly been through these situations and hearing someone speak in this manner, um, I'm sure it probably brought you back to a serious place. It brought you back to a, a bad time and it brought you back to a tough time, okay? I'm not here to bash Kirby. I'm not here to destroy her because I'm going to be honest with you. I still love that girl up to this day. Still love her and I still love her son. And I would never do anything that would tarnish who she is as an individual. Last year, when we broke up, when we took a break, Last year, um, I went on live for the people who remember this and I spoke my truth. I spoke about, you know, situations that happened. I spoke about, you know, her leaving my kids and with a, with a neighbor and, 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 you know, it really hurt me. And, um, one of the things that she was upset about, right, was that I took my um, personal life to social media. I apologized to her. I understood where she was coming from, and I really did not um, need to go on social media to express what was going on in our personal life. And if anybody remembers, now I don't have to turn up the comments because people are gonna think and say whatever they wanna say regardless. So I'm not, I'm not even, that's not why I'm even, I'm not even here for that. Um, if anybody remembers, I then came on Instagram because her mother and, her, and herself was so persistent on me apologizing, making a, a uh, public apology to her for, you know, just speaking what I was speaking about. And I did that. I did that. I came on here, I apologized to Kirby for putting our, our business, our personal business on social media and we got past it and we moved on and we were together again okay and i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to address every single thing that you think you know but before i do that i'm just going to say that i'm disappointed I'm hurt and I'm healing. I sat here for two or three days. Two or three days I sat here and watched people ridicule me, destroy me, bring me down from one person's allegation. I watched people that I gave nine years of my life to disrespect me, go on my son's page, disrespect him, a 10-year-old boy. 
my daughter, my everybody, my mother, everybody took a beating because of what one person said. <laughs> I've been accused of so much and I worked hard for where I'm at right now. I worked hard. When people told me I couldn't make it, I pushed on. When people told me that I would be nothing, I created something that I could survive on. Something that I could take care of my children on. Right? And one person, <laughs> one person, now, I'm going to start with just the obvious, just the obvious. <laughs> when I met Kirby, I met Kirby on South Beach as a fan. I met her as a fan. And like I said, I'm not here to bash. I'm, I'm here to speak my truth. And if you're willing to sit here and listen through my truth, then that's what it is. The devil is busy. I understand that. But I'm a child of God and I will always be. I've been putting up prayers and psalms and trying to motivate people for the longest time. And it's funny how all of that could be thrown to the ground spit on and disrespected in the matter of three days. So as I was saying, and, and, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this history is because I want you to understand what's going on right now. I want you to feel my pain. I want you to understand where we're at with this. And after I speak about this, I'm telling you right now, I am not going to do the back and forth business. I'm not going to do the answering and re-answering. I'm making this statement today, and this is all I'm going to talk about. And I just want to get back to my life. I want to heal, and I want to just support my children in this difficult time. So I'm not going to talk about it again. Okay? When I met Kirby, she was with her baby father. I was with my baby mother, but I was going through my problems, and I really was in a, in a bad space with my baby mother. We used to go from Florida to New York and she told me she had a baby father and she did, really didn't want to be with him, but her mother is forcing her to be with, 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 with the baby father. So we just was doing our fling thing. I went to Miami two times a, a year. I went for Memorial Weekend to do Best of the Best and I went to uh, Miami Carnival. And every time I, I went out there, I saw her. The day I met Kirby, I told her that I was going to marry her. The day I met her. The day that I met Kirby, I told her that I was going to marry her. Not knowing what the future would bring. But I just felt that way. Okay. When I met Kirby, Kirby told me that she was in an abusive relationship. Her baby father used to beat her. When she didn't want sex, when she didn't want sex, he would beat her up. She told me that he blacked her eye. She told me that he broke her jaw. And her mother never believed her. And her mother forced her to be with this man. This is what she's told me out of her own mouth. Okay? Then, the more we started dealing, the more we started dealing, all right, let's fast forward. We was dealing, we was dealing, we was dealing, and I felt, I, 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 within my, within my uh, self, I felt like she wasn't really with the baby father. So when I got out of my situation, I kind of started taking her seriously. She moved to Houston 
and she said she was in the academy and she was going to be a police officer and I was basically supporting her through it. We spoke we spoke often. She asked me for money to uh, help her, you know, buy her firearm and stuff like that. And that's what it was. I posted Kirby on Valentine's Day two years ago. Right? When I posted her, somebody commented on the page and said... Are you going to still fuck blank when you're in New York? To my knowledge, I only know about Kirby's baby father. After, after, um, after, um, this comment was on my page. She had no choice but to tell me about a dude that she was sleeping with in New York. When <laughs> these comments is they're, they're crazy. is jokey, but it's okay because my truth will it, my truth has to come out. Mm -hmm. I prayed on it this morning mm -hmm. and God told me to speak my truth and 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 he's going to guide me and be with me through this. So, no matter what people want to say, you are just a man just like me. Anyway, she had no choice but to tell me about this man that she was sleeping with. She told me that she was sleeping with this man since she was 15. And this man was older than her. He was about 24 or whatever. Come to find out that this man she was sleeping with was also her niece's uncle. Now, I saw a problem with that in myself already. But I also felt genuine love for Kirby. I also felt that I can help her through certain things. I also felt that I know she's younger than me and I know she needs to grow, but I'm going to be there for her and with her to help her grow. I went to... Houston, all right. Um, like I said, she was in she was in Houston. She told me I was going to do a show in Houston, and she told me that she wanted to see me. She said that while while I'm here, she wants to let me know. I'm gonna turn off these comments. I'm gonna turn it off. So I could so I could get through this and just and just and just uh, yeah, yeah because it's distracting me and I'm reading it. But how do I turn off these comments? Uh, comment. Okay. 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 Now I could get through this mm -hmm. and do what I gotta do. So <clears throat> she told me that she was living in Houston, and I was under the impression that she was living by herself. She told me she got, she said she wanted to go to Houston to be a police officer because she wanted to get away from her mother. This is what she told me. Her mother has been trying to run her life for years. Her mother has been um, forcing her to be with people that she didn't want to be with, and she just wanted to get away from her mother. This is what she said to me. When I was going to Houston to do this show, she told me she got to tell me something. I asked her what she wanted to tell me. She said that she moved her baby father in. I was disappointed because I thought that that uh, she was over that. I thought that she was beyond that, being that she said she was with a man that was abusing her and, and, and beating her up for sex. And I guarantee you, through my experiences, I guarantee you, if we, if we if we speak to her baby father, it'll be a different story. But I, I don't even want to go there. But anyway, I told her in 2018, I said, you know what? I don't want to be the person who is going to mash up your happy home. I'm not a house wrecker. I'm in a good space right now. I don't want to be a part of that. If you are with your baby father... And this is who you're living with. I'm good. 
I didn't speak to Kirby the whole year of 2018. In 2019, me and some of my partners decided to do a show in Houston. I haven't contacted Kirby for a whole year. When I got to Houston, my road manager looked at me. He said, what happened to that pretty girl that you used to talk to? Don't she live in Houston? Ain't she a police officer here? I said, yeah. I said, she also lived with her baby father. And I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to leave her alone. Kirby texted me and said, so you wasn't going to reach out to me and you here? I said, honestly, no. You have your life. You have your family. You have your kids. You got your kid, you know, live your life. She said, I told you that I only moved him here because I needed help with my son. Me and him is not together like that. I need help with my son. I work late hours and he's, he, I wanted him to come and help me with my child. She asked me where, she said, she told me that she was going to come to the show anyway and she was going to come in there with her police friends and they was going to stop the show. And I had no choice but to talk to her. I guess that was jokingly because we joke a lot. Please, please. I don't want nobody to call me right now. Please. No one call me. Um, right. So we, we linked up. She came to the hotel. We had sex. And I opened up to her and I, I gave her the truth. I said, listen. At the time that I met you, I didn't really want to take you seriously because I didn't want to drag you into the things that I was going through with my personal experience, my personal life with my kid's mother and everything like that. She said, I'm sorry that you felt that way, but I would have been there with you and I would have rolled it out with you. And that, to me, was some of the realest shit I've ever heard for somebody to say that they're going to be there with you through everything. You understand? So I decided that if we wanted to take it seriously, that's what we was going to do. Kirby, we and, me and Kirby started communicating again and we became, you know, girlfriend and boyfriend. We was talking while her baby father was still living there. And I accepted that. She came to Atlanta because I told her sister that I was going to engage to her. Her sister was so happy. Her sister was supportive. And I planned this engagement for when she came to Atlanta. Her mother got involved and was very upset. You don't know this man. Where do you know this man from? You don't even know his real name. Why are you so, why are you just going to marry this man? Or why are you going to take his ring or whatever? No, she didn't say about ring because she didn't, she didn't, she didn't, um, Kirby didn't know that I was going to engage to her. So her mother started feeling like she needed to interject in this situation. So her mother decided to make a fake email and sent it to Kirby and told Kirby that this is what somebody sent to her. Within that email, it was, my name is not Nigel Joseph. My name is not Nigel Joseph, and I've, and I've been exposing Kirby's nudes. Now for a woman to doctor up an email to stop <laughs> us from, from communicating and stopping us from, from loving each other is sick. For a grown woman to do that. Okay? Kirby did her due diligence and realized that it was a lie. And she realized that her mother was lying. That's her mother. Of course, she's going to forgive her mother. She was very distraught about it, but she also, that's her mother. I expect her to forgive her mother. And her mother told her that she was only trying to protect her. Kirby called me one day when she lived with her mother. 
and was crying, was in tears. She had a, a red vial. It was a clear bottle about this big, maybe a little smaller, clear bottle. It had red liquid in it and a paper wrapped up in it. She called me on FaceTime, she was crying. And I said, what's the matter? And she told me, I found, my grandmother sent me in her purse to get something and I found this in it. She poured the liquid out. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think she even tasted it. And she was like, it's sweet. She broke the bottle. She unraveled the paper. And on this paper, it says Kirby. And, and, and I don't, like I said, I don't have a reason to lie. I'm speaking my truth today. Because <laughs> I'm just speaking my truth. So anyway, she unraveled this paper and the paper said, Kirby, submit to q -Ain. Kirby, love q -Ain. Kirby, never leave q -Ain. She said, my mother and my grandmother is wicked, yo. They really voodooing me to stay with this man. So this is something that they've been into, obviously. Moving forward. I proposed to Kirby because I loved her. Nothing more. I was who I am before Kirby. And I'm definitely going to be who I am after Kirby. Kirby told me that she was going to leave her job. And she wanted to move so that we could be together in Atlanta. We both agreed on that. I, I went to uh, Houston. And... I paid for the U-Haul. Me and my kids helped her pack all of her stuff. And we drove 14 hours from Houston to Atlanta so that we can be together. The plan was that Kirby was supposed to take FMLA for two months. During that two months, she was supposed to do her transfer paper. She was supposed to do a uh, lateral program, which means she didn't have to go through the academy again. They would just re recognize that she was a police officer in Houston and she would become a police officer here in Georgia. Well, that FMLA lasted two years because I took care of Kirby, spent my money, bought horses, and did everything that I could do to make Kirby happy. And I'm going to tell you the truth, nothing that I've ever done was going to make Kirby happy because she wasn't happy within herself. She jumped directly out of one relationship into another. There was no healing process. There was no time to reevaluate. There was no time for anything. And I think that was probably one of our biggest mistakes. Now, keep in mind that I've already been told that she was in an abusive relationship with her, with her baby father. She told me that his sister was doing voodoo on her. Her mother is doing voodoo on her or her grandmother. And she's with a dude that's been having sex with her since she was 15. Now, that dude, and I'm not naming any names, but that dude, when I first started, when we first got serious, Kirby told me, and I have all of the texts and everything right here, so I'm gonna read it with, I'm gonna read it for you. So like I said, if you don't have the time to hear this truth, then you can go now. But I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put everything out because I want this to be done with. And like I said, I'm not responding after any type of backlash, any type of rebuttals, responses. I, I'm I'm gonna move on after this. So the guy that she was dealing with, which is her niece's uncle, when we decided to get serious, she told me, I don't know if this is the story, I don't know if this is correct, but she told me that this man was threatening her to put out her sex tape. The sex tapes that he has with her, he was threatening her. He said he was going to um, make paper, he's going to print papers with her nudes and put it all over the hood because she's originally from Schenectady and Empire. So she was gonna put, he was going to put it all over there and all of that. I reached out to some friends that have that that's that's mutual friends with him and I explained to them I said listen if she if he if he disrespects her like that and puts out her nudes 
then he's disrespecting me. And that, and that can't happen. When they spoke to him, he said um, he, was in his, he was in his feelings, and he did say that, but he's not going to do that. It's all good. Shorty could go ahead and whatever, whatever, whatever. So the, 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 the abuse, the sexual abuse, the, the putting out of sex tapes has been a cycle for Kirby. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it's a cycle. Moving on. It's a shame to experience these things. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm so apologetic to the women that went through domestic violence, been beat up and all of these things and abused and all of these things. It's, it's really unfortunate. And as a kid growing up, I'm going to put my truth all the way out here. As a kid growing up, I watched my mother. We went to my father's house and my mother went to, to tell him that I needed a bicycle. I was six years old. She went to his house. She told my father, your son needs a bicycle. Your son needs a bicycle. And my father looked out the window and he told her that if he comes downstairs, she's going to regret it. My mother and my father wasn't together at the time. He had his family, my mother had her people, and that's what it was. But I remember it like it was yesterday because this is something that I've lived through all my life. I was six years old. And these things I've confided into Kirby with. My father came downstairs with a machete in his hand. The story that I was told was that he's tried to hit her with the side of the machete. But he chopped my mother's hand. And my mother's hand was hanging from a thread. Then I sat there as a six-year-old child and watched that whole thing. I've grown so much resentment for my father for that. I've held so much things back. And I use my comedy and my drive to become who I am today. So for somebody to try to destroy me after I've been nothing but good to this person, Some people is just so wicked. And I'm not even talking about Kirby. But people is wicked. For y'all to come on here and disrespect me and disrespect my family. And y'all don't know. Y'all have no idea what I've been through. Not, not a, even a piece. Not even a piece of what I've been through. I was molested as a child. I confided in somebody about it, which is Kirby. I told her, I said, listen, I've been through a lot and I just want to know that you're here for me. I told her I was molested as a child from a male family member. And she took that and she used it as ammunition. We had an argument. 